That very same day, two of them were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognising him. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognised him. But he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out at that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognised him at the breaking of bread. This story of the journey on the road to Emmaus is one which we're probably all familiar with. I didn't read the middle section where Jesus explains the scriptures to them and I invite you to go back and read that yourself. But what struck me was that here were a group of people who were so stricken by grief that their world had contracted and they couldn't even recognise Jesus when they saw him. It's like everything had closed in and their eyes were shuttered. Jesus comes, he talks with them, they still don't recognise him. They're listening with an intellect, but not with a heart story. And then they say, oh, it's getting late, come and stay with us. Probably they were stimulated by what he'd been saying. So he goes in and stays with them, and he breaks bread. And that wonderful action of breaking bread and sharing it is what opens their eyes. And I'm thinking two things about this. One is the importance of the Eucharist for us as Christians. This reliving, remembering, putting it together again of what Jesus did for us. This is highly significant and very precious. And Eucharist needs to maintain its place of importance in our lives. And that can be difficult Sometimes there are not enough priests to have regular Eucharist. Maybe we need to pray more that people will, will respond to that call to priesthood. The second thing I'm thinking about is the importance of us as human beings, as people of faith who have a love for other people, who are trying to live out Jesus' command of love to invite people to share our bread. That may be the reality of sharing a meal, actually eating together, and that is very important. And I've got to say, I hate what's happening in some homes today where people are eating meals in front of television constantly. I think having a meal at a table where there is conversation about what's happened in the day and what might be happening in the city or the world, that is critical to our development as human beings. It might also mean sharing a figurative meal. In other words, sharing your bread of your life. Sitting, listening to someone. Maybe while you're riding the bus. Or maybe when you go for a walk and there's somebody doing the garden and you stop and you say to them, I love your garden, 
that's so interesting, tell me about this, or what about that? And getting them into a conversation so they feel valued and recognised. And it might mean sharing with your more, more um, intimate friends what's happening in your internal world, in your internal life. Maybe talking about your faith, which we Kiwis are not very good at doing. You know, what does Jesus mean to me in my daily life? For me personally, Jesus is my constant companion. Often when I'm driving a car, I find myself thinking, praying, praising. And I think this is how we have to be able to um, approach God, approach Jesus, God's Son, and how we have to know that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of love is with us through the day. I heard something on the radio yesterday, I didn't hear the whole thing, I just heard the introduction, where this person has done some research, and if you can get three positive thoughts compared with one negative thought, if you keep on living your life like that, you become a more resilient and optimistic person. And all I thought to myself was, well, you know, if we could just keep focusing on God and God's love and the good in the world today, that would help a lot. I hope your week goes well.